The American Midwestern town, Raccoon City, has been completely decimated due to the T-virus outbreak that was instigated by the international corporation Umbrella. Claire Redfield, who arrived in Raccoon City to search for her lost brother Chris and a rookie police officer, Leon S. Kennedy, managed to escape from the city. But their ordeal was only a prelude of things to come. Three months later, Identification number is WKD4496. <sighs> Welcome to your new home. Her name is Claire Redfield. We caught her trespassing in our Paris lab facility ten days ago. She apparently infiltrated the complex looking for her lost brother, Chris Redfield, one of the surviving members of RPD's famous STARS teams. Get out of here. 
This place is finished. I don't know, it might have been a special forces team. But in any case, this prison's been taken over. Troops have been wiped out. What are you saying? You're free to leave the complex. But you may as well know, you have no chance of getting off this island. And what about you? What are you going to do? Don't worry about me. Prisoner's Diary. May 13th. This room stinks of death. Based upon the information I've found, I believe that I'm far south of the equator. Lucky for me that Bob in the bunk below me is one of those interesting types of guys. May 16th. Today Bob told some crazy story of why he was put this place with me. Bob said that he used to be an attendant at the head of this place. This boss named Alfred supposedly placed him in here because of a tiny little mistake. What does that mean? What's going to happen to me? May 20th. Without warning, a group of military men took Bob to the building behind the guillotine stand. At midnight, I'll sneak out of here to see him. I've been hearing that anyone taken to that building never comes back. On top of that, there are these really large plastic bags being constantly being removed from that place. I'd better pray for Bob. May 21st. I was wrong. I shouldn't have gone there. What is going on in there? All I could hear was some insanely creepy laughter and the sound of Bob screaming. I don't know what to do. I can't stop thinking about it. Is that going to happen to me? I can't let it. I just can't. May 27th. Since my last entry, all of my fellow inmates have been taken to that building. I know that I'm next. It's obvious that we are all here to be used as Alfred's guinea pigs. There's no way out. What am I going to do? Zombie? Well, great. We're right there. 
I'm coming over. Uh, sorry about that little misunderstanding, but I thought you were another one of those monsters. Shut up. Make one wrong move and I'll shoot. That's beautiful. I said I was sore. My name's Steve. I was a prisoner on this island. And I'm guessing you're not from Umbrella either. No, I'm Claire. Claire Redfield. Claire? Hmm. Nice. I'll remember that. Hey. There's an airport around here. And once I find it, I can finally escape from this crazy island. Well, I'll see ya. Hey, wait up! I don't want you following me, lady. You'll only slow me down. Fax on the facility access application. Be sure to verify the content of the following facility access application form and add the applicant's name to the expected visitors list. Chief Prison Guard Room. Paul Steiner. I hereby apply for access permission for Prison Area D. Details follow. Visitor's name. Carl Grisham. Purpose of entry. Carrying in the following materials. 1. New product sample from Metal Industries Co. TG01. 2. Various daily commodities ordered by the prison. Note. 1. Will use a transportation truck. 2. TG01 sample will be stored in a designated briefcase. Chris Redfield. What are you doing here? Chris Redfield. Is he a relative of yours or something? You mean my brother? Ah. Your siblings. Well, it seems your brother is under surveillance by Umbrella. What? I've got to contact Leon and tell him to let my brother know he's being monitored. It's a good thing I have access to an outside connection from here. Well, that file shows the latitude and longitude of this place. <laughs> Why don't you send your brother the coordinates and ask him to come help? Thanks. I'll do that. Hey, I was just kidding. There's no way he could get here, even if he is your brother. Yes, he can. I'm sure of it. No way. He won't come. You'll just end up disappointed if you rely on others. Believe me, I know! What was that all about?
hazard contamination detected. Level 3. Emergency shutters will close. All personnel evacuate immediately. <laughs> That was close. TGO1 product description. Thank you for your continued support and for using our products. This time we have gathered our most advanced technologies and have succeeded in creating the unique anti metal detection alloy TGO1. TGO1 features 1. Cannot be detected by any metal detectors. 2. Cannot be pictured by Rundgenography at the immigration check. 3. Lightweight, yet durable. We plan to develop various weapons utilizing this innovative new alloy. We enclosed a sample for you to review. We look forward to hearing from you regarding possible business opportunities. Metal Industries Co. Chief. Development Planning. Carl Redhill. Steve? I was too close. But I found something, thanks to you. Looks cool, huh? Oh, I need those. Give them to me. You gotta be kidding. I found it, and I'm keeping it. Fine. Let's make a deal. I'll trade you for something fully automatic. See you around, Claire. Adios. 
Hey, wait, Steve! interfere with my operation. What are you talking about? You let yourself be captured so you can lead your people to this base. I have no idea what you're babbling about. You don't fool me. I am Alfred Ashford, commander of this base. Oh? <laughs> You must be one of Umbrella's lower-level officers if you're in command of a backwater base like this one. How dare you! The Ashford family is among the world's first and finest. My grandfather is one of the original founders of Umbrella Inc. Now tell me, why have you attacked this installation? Attacked? Shortly after you arrived, my base was attacked. You must have informed your people of its location. I still don't follow you. I really don't know anything about that. Unacceptable! How can you deny it? My base has been destroyed. And thanks to you, the experimental T-Virus was released, creating countless zombies and monsters. Tell me, who do you work for? Who sent you? <laughs> Have it your way then. You're just a rat in a cage anyway. I'll be sure to keep you entertained before I dispose of you. <laughs> you are in a special playground I have prepared just for you. Please try and keep me amused, and do not disappoint me by dying too soon. I so want to enjoy this. <laughs>
memo on the past number. The emergency lock system in the biology experiment room can be released with the four-digit pass number. I hope you haven't forgotten about it already. I have just received an order from the system administrator requesting this to change the pass number periodically. What bothers me is that you often lose important memos, pass numbers, or even chemicals. So, in an attempt to solve that problem, I came up with an idea. You know the red human skeleton picture at the back of the biology experiment room. I have decided to use the number signed on the picture as the pass number. If you happen to lose the memo just use the picture. Well, I don't think you would ever need to use the emergency pass number, anyway. But just in case, now you know. Take it easy, Mr. Careless. That felt good. Don't worry, Claire. Your knight in shining armor is here. You wish. But thanks for the help. See? This is why you need me. I got your back. Whatever. Here. Take these. Machine guns? For me? You know the deal, in exchange for your Lugers. <laughs> okay, okay! <laughs> this thing is too cool! Yes! Now this is my kind of weapon! Alright! Huh? <laughs> hey! This thing's empty! You cheated me! Up there. Plenty of ammo, just for you. Way up there? Give me a boost and I'll get it for you. All right, all right. Ow! My back! You're heavier than you look. Hurry up! Happy now? What? Now that your knight has made his appearance, he can join you in your descent into death. Okay, let's do it! Wait here, Claire! Time to test out my new toy!
Hey, Claire! I managed to clear a path for you. It should be safe now. Well, what do you think of my work? You see? This thing is a lot more reliable than any person. Than people? Steve. What were you doing here? Who brought you here and where is your family? Shut up! I don't want to talk about it! Steve. Never mind. Let's get going. Are you okay? Steve, behind you! No! What's wrong, Steve? Shoot him! Wait! I... I can't! No! Steve! No! Father, father, father. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, I used to work for Umbrella, I tried to steal information, intending to sell it off to the highest bidder. He was caught, Mom was killed, and we were sent here. Oh, Steve. He was a fool to do something so reckless. So stupid. It's okay now. Just rest. Secretary's note. Four years have passed since I began serving Sir Alfred. He doesn't trust anyone.
Even though I am his attendant, I am still strictly prohibited from entering his private house. What is his problem anyway? They say he lives with his twin sister Alexia in his private house on the hill. Occasionally, I've seen someone standing by the window of the house. It might have been Alexia, whose extreme beauty is often talked about. I once asked Sir Alfred about this, but it only enraged him. Even though I am his attendant, he will not show me any lenience. If I ask about her again, I could put my life at risk. After all, it is a mystery why he so desperately tries to keep his private life with Alexia a secret. Robert Dawson Message to the new family master. Sir Alfred. Congratulations on your succession as master of the Ashford family. I hereby present you with an earthenware vase, according to the Ashford family tradition. As you may know, this tradition first began when a butler presented a golden teacup as a commemorative to Veronica. As founder of the Ashford family, her intelligence and beauty are legendary. The second and third masters, Stanley and his son Thomas, were also presented with similar teacups. It was the hope to achieve glory as Veronica did before them. The position as family master then shifted from Sir Thomas to his twin brother Sir Arthur. It then went to Sir Edward, your grandfather. That was when the Ashford family enjoyed its golden age. It was also Sir Edward's achievement that established the large chemical enterprise, Umbrella Inc. However, when Sir Edward passed away and your father Sir Alexander succeeded the position, the glorious Ashford family gradually began to sink. I sincerely hope that the Ashford family regains its glory with your guidance just as this vase continues to shine eternally. Scott Harmon. Butler. Ashford family. Keep focus, brother. Our enemy is only a little girl. Oh, why is this taking so long? My apologies, Alexia, but I have been doing my best. The revival of the Ashford family depends on your success, brother. I am aware of that, Alexia. I will revive the family name myself and make you the master of the glorious Ashford family. Do not worry, brother. I will handle them both myself. Who is there? Is someone at the corridor? What is it, Alexia? N nothing. I believe I must have been imagining things. Let us go, brother.
My Alexander's memo. My father, Edward, discovered the mother virus in cooperation with Lord Spencer, who was also a nobleman. They studied it for the purpose of military use. Eventually the study took shape. They named a variation of the mother virus the T-virus. To camouflage the research, they established Umbrella Chemical, Inc. I majored in biogenetics and have been involved with a top-secret project, supporting my father's research. However, my research went through a difficult phase, and my father died in the middle of the project. We are now at a major disadvantage against the other researchers, as there is great competition in the field of T-virus research. I have disgraced the honorable name of the Ashford family that our great ancestor Veronica established. If nothing is done, Umbrella will be taken over by Spencer. I must expedite the project to its fullest, without being detected by Spencer. After much thought, I decided to establish a large-scale advanced research facility. It will be located in the transport terminal that I created by using the abandoned mine in the Antarctic. Within the facility, I'll have a room built. It will be similar to the design of my mansion, the legacy of the late Trevor. I will be able to cherish my sweet memories there. For security purposes, this confidential project will be given a code name. It is the same name if the beautiful ancestor of the Ashford family, Veronica, whom I wish to receive so badly. I am confident that the result of my research will be as glorious as her name. And that honor will be restored to the Ashford family once again. What are you doing here? Hemostatic medicine. How kind of you. Thanks. Here, let me help you with that. Thanks, but I can take care of myself. Just go. Keep it. It was a gift from my brother, but... Thanks. Here, let me give you this in return. You might need it later on. Now go. Don't worry about me. Alfred's Diary. January 30th. There's a sealed room in the hallway located inside of the Antarctic facility. I don't know what is hidden there, but I do know how to get in. I can use the three jewels that each one of our three family members wear as proof of being a legitimate descendant of the Ashford family. The only problem is, I do not know how I can gain possession of my father's proof. February 17th. I finally succeeded in entering that sealed room. I never could have imagined that such an insane secret existed regarding the birth of both Alexia and myself. I hate my father. That fool, Alexander. Now it is obvious that we were merely created in an attempt to cover my father's blunder. I can never trust him again. I must regain the glory of the Ashford family with my sister. I have nothing to be afraid of as long as Alexia is with me. March 3rd. Alexia carried out the experiment on the human body that we've been talking about. Our useless father must be happy now, since he can finally contribute to the Ashford family. The only thing we should be careful about is that the butler, Harmon, does not become wise to our activities. April 22nd. The experiment resulted in failure. Our father was useless after all. Even worse, he turned into a dangerous monster that is completely out of control. We tied him down and locked him up in an underground prison cell. However, Alexia seems to be close to a solution. Beyond all my expectations, she now says that she wishes to conduct the experiment on her own body. On top of that, she feels she must be kept asleep for 15 years in order to accomplish the experiment. 
Thanks to that idiot, I can't see my dear Alexia for as long as 15 years. Alexia is going to sleep with all of her trust relying upon me. Now I'm the only one who can protect Alexia. I will be able to cherish my sweet memories there. For security purposes, this confidential project will be given a code name. It is the same name if the beautiful ancestor of the Ashford family, Veronica, whom I wish to receive so badly. I am confident that the result of my research will be as glorious as her name. And that honor will be restored to the Ashford family once again. Report. Enhanced Anti-Decay Alloy. Although we plan to utilize the enhanced anti-decay alloy called deployed to create the storage capsule of the new BOW, we have had to cancel the plan. This is primarily based upon the fact that despite its excellent resistance to all kinds of liquid including strong acid, it easily dissolves when soaked with a mixture of the two chemicals Clement Alpha and Clement Sigma. Due to the lethal nature of the new BOW, we cannot be too careful in choosing the material for the storage capsule. We have instead decided to use deployed to create the plate portion of the eagle plate, which shines in indigo blue. Clement information. The alpha type is used for gun maintenance and possesses no conspicuous characteristics. However, the sigma type will change its color to blue at a certain temperature. It is an odd coincidence that the temperature is exactly the same as the date of completion of this training facility. Based upon our analysis of the Sigma type, we believe the Clement possesses more features. As new information is learned, we will update this file. Greetings! You must be the lovely Claire Redfield. Who are you? Let's just say that I'm a ghost, coming back to haunt your dear brother. Wesker? It seems there's not much explaining to do, is there? I was the one who attacked this island. Who'd have thought you'd be hanging about? <laughs> All the better for me. Now that the cat dragged in this nice surprise, your ever so caring brother will definitely show up. I must thank you for being such good bait. I don't know what went on between you two, but you have him all wrong. My brother is not the kind of person you think he is. I despise Chris. Uh, what are you going to do to him? Uh, 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 oh, 
how your brother will weep to see you die. <laughs> What? What is it? Stay there. I'm coming. It appears you may be of some further use to me. I'm going to let you live a little longer. Redfield, hold it right there. We meet each other at last. A pity I must say goodbye so soon. I am Alexia Ashford. For the pride of the Ashford family, I will kill you. Wait! What's going on? Are you okay? I'm fine. It's just a scratch. This must be... Second, what just happened? So there never was an Alexia after all. You mean he thinks he's two people? Okay, that's it. Let's get out of here. The self destruct system has been that freak activated. He's trying to blow us all up along with the entire evacuate. facility immediately. Come on, we got to get to that airport. Right. Anatomist's note. There is a demon in my mind. I can't control the fierce impulses that the demon sometimes drives me to act upon. It is a brutal ceremony. With the demon next to me, I enjoy watching people agonize in pain, screaming and convulsing repeatedly as they die. But, Sir Alfred was kind enough to acknowledge me, and has given me the facilities, chemicals, and equipment necessarily to study everything. I must never portray Sir Alfred's kindness. It is especially critical that no one discovers the sacred place that only he and I know about. I swear, the basement of this medical building will be kept secret.
Of course, I keep the key to the sacred place with me at all times. Even if an outsider sees it, they will never be able to tell that it is the key. I must remember that my life ends when I lose Sir Alfred's trust. Claire! Those must be the remaining survivors. We'd better get out of here too. Right. Let's go! take off unless we raise the bridge leave that to me you stay here and make preparations for takeoff the self destruct Detonation. I will not allow you fools to escape. This is what you get for trying to oppose me. Now feel my revenge! <laughs>
So long. I was starting to get worried. No time to explain. Let's go. Right. We're out of here. Time to say goodbye to this death trap. for both of us. Well, I really hope you find your brother. I... I know what it's like to be alone. Oh, Steve. <clears throat> so, where should we go now? I can take you anywhere you want to go, Claire. I hear Hawaii is nice this time of year. You got it! What real terror is all about! Thank <laughs> you. 
Nothing. Just a giant cockroach that had to be stepped on. What's happening? I don't know. The plane just changed direction on its own. It's flying in autopilot mode. I can't switch over to manual control. My apologies. But I cannot let you escape now. <laughs> Alfred, you cross-dressing freak! Latitude, 82.17 degrees. That's... the Antarctic. We're over the Antarctic! What? Hey! Those are the seaplanes that left the island right before us! Then that must mean... This place belongs to Umbrella!
Thanks. Oh, uh... <coughs> plane's trashed. Well, let's split up and find another way off this oversized freezer. Right. Okay, let's do it! Butler's letter. Sir Alfred, please forgive me as I must tell you of my abrupt departure by leaving this letter. I first served your father, Lord Alexander, and have for so long shared in the joys and sorrows of the Ashford family. Lord Alexander disappeared unexpectedly fifteen years ago, then an accident during an experiment took the life of our dear Alexia. You were forced to become the master of the family at a very young age, and nearly lost your sanity from the sorrow of having lost all of your family members at once. There was nothing I could do, and I felt powerless. I first thought that I should kill myself to apologize. I then realized that it would be an insult to our dear Lord Alexander and Alexia in the other world. Scott Harmon. Butler. Ashford Family. Confession Letter Alexia, my sister, is a genius and possesses unmatched beauty. She is everything to me. I would overcome any obstacle and be willing to risk my life for her. For Alexia, I must revive the glorious Ashford family which fell during the era of my father, Alexander. Together we will restore our family name. Once that has been achieved, we'll build a palace where only nobles may gather. I cannot allow the unwashed to see my dear Alexia, to whom my life is devoted to. She reigns the world as queen, with I as her servant. That is my dream, and how sweet it will be. Those accomplishments will be proof of my love toward Alexia. It is the purpose of my existence. All other people are meaningless, and they shall prostrate themselves before Alexia and I. Devoted to my beloved Alexia. Alfred Ashford. Claire, it looks like there's an Australian observation base about seven miles away from here. That should be our target. Great news. And take a look at that. It's a digging vehicle. If we break the wall with it, we might have a chance. Okay, let's do it!
It's all my fault. Don't say that. Listen to me. We'll escape from here. Together. Come on. We've got to shut off the gas. If we split up, we'll have a better chance of stopping it. <sighs> okay. Steve! Don't forget. We'll get out of here. Together. We're safe now. Think again, Claire. I shall enjoy watching you shriek in agony. Not this time! You did! I'm gonna bust through that wall. Go for it. through there. Come on, let's go. Claire, come on. Finally, we can get out of this insane place. Okay, let's go! Come on, let's go! What, are you scared?
forget about me. Run! I'm sorry. I failed you. Don't worry about it. Let's go. <sighs> I swear I'll protect you next time, Claire. We did it! We're finally out! <laughs> Look! There's a snowmobile over there!
following up on a lead given to me by Leon has brought me here. to find another living person left on this island. Who are you? I came here looking for a certain girl. A girl? Have you seen anyone named Claire Redfield? Did you just say... Claire? You know who she is, don't you? Don't worry about her. I helped her escape. Several planes took off from this island not long ago. While I can't say for certain, she was probably on one of them. I see. I guess my sister owes you. Thanks for helping. Everyone's gone. I may be the only other person left. Go on. Follow your sister and get off this island.
take it. Hunk's report. ATTN. Mr. Alfred Ashford, head of the facility. Today at 1632, I arrived successfully from the Umbrella Transport Base with the large-scale BOW capsule. Extreme care was taken during transport, and all 108 checkpoints were confirmed condition green, in accordance with standard procedures. It is currently being stored in a freezer. There's one thing that I don't understand. We are normally assigned to special missions. Why were we ordered to transport a frozen capsule this time? I understand that this may be classified as top secret, but without knowledge of the contents, our safety could be at risk during the transport. This is especially important if the contents potentially harmful. We would like to ask you provide us with more information, should we be assigned similar missions in the future. I still remember the good old days that I spent in the military training center. Nothing has changed since then. We will gear up for the next mission, today at 2300. Umbrella Special Forces Unit. Hunk. Queen. The king was Who is loved, that? but the queen was feared. Alexia? No! She's already fully awake. Chris, oh little fishy, come see my hook. Chris. I'm sending some company to keep you entertained. Consider this a small welcoming gift from me. Enjoy! <laughs> Research Report on Queen Ant After discovering the remains of an ancient virus within the genes of a queen ant, I have been concentrating on the research of ants. The ecosystem of the ants seems truly ideal to me. There is one queen ant in each anthill, and the soldier and worker ants are the queen's slaves. They dedicate their lives to the queen. The death of the queen ant means the doom of the entire anthill. However, the soldier and worker ants can be easily replaced as long as the queen ant is alive. This is exactly the same relationship between myself and other ignorant masses. I have succeeded in creating an ideal virus by implanting the queen ant's gene into the mother virus that Spencer found. I used my otherwise useless father as a test subject. However, as I expected, the virus caused a rapid change in his cells triggering the complete destruction of his brain cells and body flesh. Furthermore, a special type of poison gas was generated inside his body, that the blue herb had no effect against. Because of this, I created an antidote in case of emergency, and stored it inside of the weapon-slash-chemical warehouse on the B2 floor. I have decided to name this virus with unimaginable potential, the T. Veronica virus. When I find out how I can fully utilize the power of wonderful virus, my great research will finally be complete. Alexia Ashford
<laughs> Long time no see, Chris. Wesker? He's still alive? <laughs> What are you doing here? I came for Alexia. Who? An organization hired me to capture her. Wait! You attacked the island! And my sister! My plans. So now I've sold my soul to a new organization. Now die. Here's a little secret, Chris. I figured out that your sister is now in the Antarctic. With Alexia. It's too bad you won't be seeing her again. <laughs> Alexia? <laughs> Security file. The Ashford family's most important secret is kept at this lab. As a safety precaution, I have installed a self-destruct device in the control room and have placed the activation code inside the computer. Once inputted, all door locks will be released to provide easy access to escape routes. By using the elevator that directly connects to the hangar, one should be able to escape from the lab easily. Please remember that I have used the name of my beautiful ancestor for the activation code. Glory to the Ashfords. Alexander Ashford.
code. Veronica report. After many long years of research, I finally identified the inheritance element that administers the intelligence of man. I even succeeded in manipulating the absolute value of intelligence artificially, by recomposing the base alignment of the element. I then sampled the gene of outgrade ancestor, manipulated its element, then implanted it into the unfertilized egg of a surrogate mother. What I didn't expect was that twins, a boy and a girl, were born. The boy had higher intelligence than normal, but not high enough for him to be considered a genius. However, the girl had unmatched intelligence that easily allowed her to be classified as a genius. She was exactly what I had been looking for, the revival of Outgrade Ancestor. I already determined the names, the girl's name, Alexia, and the boy's name, Alfred. I'm certain that Alexia will elevate the name of the Ashford family to extreme glory. Alexander Ashford Virus Research Report Work continues on the T. Veronica virus which I extracted from the Queen Ant. The more research I conduct on it, the more I am impressed by how much potential it has. I have finally implanted the virus into my own body, and discovered how to fully utilize its power. I will avoid making the mistake that I made on my father. I will suppress the activity of the virus at an ultra-low temperature, so that my cells will change slowly. My calculations indicate that it will take 15 years before my body will gain immunity, and become able to coexist with the virus. Until then, I have no choice but to trust the capsule that I will be in, to that inept but loyal soldier and who is my brother. For me to obtain unlimited power, some risks need to be taken. When I awaken, I will be the queen. And the T. Veronica virus will be unleashed upon the entire world by my children. Every last creature on earth will exist to serve me. At that time, the world will achieve the perfect ecosystem, just like an anthill, but on a much grander scale. Alexia Ashford What? He's here?
Who could have done this? <laughs> Alexia? That is how I dispose of insignificant bugs. Said the spider to the fly. How do you wish to die? So much. I know. But we have to get out of here. Not yet. We have to find Steve. Who's Steve? He's a boy who escaped from that island with me. But then a monster attacked us and we got separated. So that means Steve is still somewhere in this base? I'm sure of it. Claire? What's wrong? I think... I think I've been poisoned. Just hold on. I'll be right back. Worker's Diary. October 30th. When I joined Umbrella Inc., I thought that I would be able to live carefree for the rest of my life, being employed by this huge corporation. It's a joke that I ended up being a driver at a place like this. I asked for a position change, but they completely ignored me. It feels more like a prison. Work is extremely demanding, and there's nothing fun about it. I'd rather be dead. November 3rd. My hard-earned vacation was cancelled suddenly. I heard they failed to secure enough manpower due to a mistake made by the facility head, Alfred. That fool doesn't deserve forgiveness. He doesn't even treat us like human beings. November 5th. I heard an interesting story from a guy who's been working here for eight years. He must be awfully patient. He says that there is a man who has been confined for over ten years, locked up in a cell deep below here. People call him Nosferatu and are deathly afraid of him. What an absurd story. November 10th. At midnight I woke up to an ominous growling sound that seemed to be coming from deep underground. I'm so pathetic to have been frightened by such a foolish story. Then again. I suppose anyone would have a hard time maintaining the sanity if they were confined in a place like this.
secret passage note. The underground passage which leads to the mansion where Alexia and I live has been badly damaged. Although I can never allow the unwashed to see Alexia, I cannot go on using the underground waterway that those local people made, either. Oh yes. I think I'll have those prisoners build a bridge. It must be a gorgeous bridge that benefits the perfection that is Alexia. Of course, I must kill everyone who's involved in the construction of the bridge after it is done, so that no one will know about the existence of our mansion. But that is okay, as I have no problems executing such matters. Once the bridge is completed, I'll seal the mansion entrance door at the end of the underground waterway. The entrance of the waterway is locked by the diorama trick, ensuring the secrecy of our mansion. Alfred Ashford. Claire. I'll take care of you now. Feeling better? Thanks to you. Just like a big brother, huh? You're always looking out for your little sister. It's Alexia! Alexia? There really is an Alexia? <laughs> it is almost time, you genetically inferior siblings. <laughs> After her! She might know where Steve is. Let's go! <laughs> Just go. I'll be fine. But Chris... You've got to save Steve. Go! she did on her own father. She's completely... insane. What's wrong? Claire! Can't breathe. Claire! Help me! Steve! 
found you, Alexia. Come with me. <laughs> You're responsible for the creation of the T. Veronica virus. And now the only existing sample is in your body. I want it. Now! You want it? You are not worthy of its power!
Claire? Is that you, Claire? Chris? No! The door won't open. Hey, is Steve with you? <laughs> Steve, he... <laughs> Listen, Claire. We have to get out of here immediately. Can you unlock it from the inside? No, I can't. Chris, there should be a self-destruct system somewhere. If you activate it, all the electronic locks might be deactivated. <laughs> DIJ's Diary During a heavy squall, a girl in a red outfit was brought to this island of Rockfit, my home. What could she have possibly done? I've been living here quite some time now, but many who are brought to this island seldom leave alive. Through the sounds of guns and fire, soldiers appeared. There was something going on. I went to the prison, but the girl in red was nowhere in sight. I hurried to the military training facility. The man of Rockfit was attacking her relentlessly. How stupid of me. I got too close and almost got myself smashed by the shutters. But, thanks to my natural agility, I was able to get out of the situation and get outside. Anyone other than me would not have been so lucky. Again, I was able to find the girl in red. There she was, in front of the residence. Then from behind her appeared a man with blonde hair. As he called to her, he approached her in a friendly manner and started saying something to her. And it happened abruptly. The man in blonde hair started to hurt the girl in red. I have to save her, I thought to myself. But the man with the blonde hair went away. Who was that blonde haired man? What did he want from the girl in the red? The self-destruct announcement and the emergency siren warned the end of Rockfit Island. I hurried to the hangar of the transport. The transport we were on took off as everything exploded into flames. With my neck risking effort, the girl in red slammed the monster out into the open sky. Sure enough, she was a Valkyrie, a goddess of destruction. I couldn't believe it. The transport landed in a base on the icy Antarctica. And on top of it all, the transport that landed before us spilled tons of the T-virus and everything alive had already turned into zombies. If I stayed, there was no way I could stay alive. I had to find a way to get out of there, quickly. I parted with the girl in red. I started searching the base to see if there was anything I could use. As I was resting in the dark, someone was coming. Whatever it was, it was right there. The door suddenly closed and there was no escape. I kept slamming the doors. Then the door opened. I exploded out of there. But I was no chicken. I stopped to turn around and there she was, the girl in the red, standing there looking at me. Where was this place? I was stuck in a room with an elevator and old cannon. Where was I supposed to go? I was stranded. I felt endless despair. Then that blonde-haired man with the sunglasses appeared. He had the girl in an arm lock. Then a man in a black vest came running after them. The man with the blonde hair disappeared into the prison cell with the girl. The man in the black vest followed them. I also hurried to chase after them. It was a grueling fight head to head was the man who knew that girl a monster. The fight looked like it could last forever. Then suddenly there was an explosion, which interfered the fight. That was the last chance. 
I had to get out of there. I snuck through the hatch of the sub as it was about to close. Finally, I was released from a world of death and I was able to come back to a world where desire and power ruled. D.I.J. This facility will detonate in five minutes. All doors are now. Of course. Come on, let's get out of here. Clockwise, simultaneously on three. Got it. One. Two. Three. Busy. Just go for the emergency elevator. Chris, but I can take care of this. Just go. You have to make it. Don't die on me.
Chris! <sighs> well done, Chris. It turns out that Alexia's work wasn't much of anything. So now, the only thing left is revenge. Let her go, Wesker! You don't want her. Fine. Claire! Today's a good day. I came for Alexia, but killing you is even better. Sorry to disappoint you, but Alexia is gone. That's no longer a concern to me. I have Steve to work with. What? Steve. In his body, there's still a living T. Alexia virus. Steve should be a good specimen. Maybe he'll come back alive, just as I did, and be able to see your sister again. You freak! Don't you touch him! I'm sorry, dear heart. But my men have already taken him. You get out of here, Claire. But what about... As a surviving member of Starks, I have to finish. Remember your promise. I'll end this once and for all. Say hello to my comrades who you've killed. I don't know where you get your confidence, Chris. Self-destruct system has been activated. All personnel evacuate immediately. The self-destruct system has been activated. All personnel evacuate immediately. anymore. But just look at the power I've gained.
keep my promises. <laughs> Chris, promise me. Please promise that you won't leave me alone again. I'm sorry, Claire, but it's not over yet. There's still something we've got to do. You mean... Yeah! It's payback time. We've got to destroy Umbrella. Now! Let's finish this once and for all! Ah! 